A FOX NEWS ALERT, A REMARKABLE SCENE IN ASIA TODAY. FIRST OF ALL, YOU'RE LOOKING AT LIVE PICTURES OF ANCHORAGE, ALASKA, WHERE THE THREE U.S. CITIZENS DETAINED BY THE NORTH KOREAN GOVERNMENT ARE FLYING OUT. THEY'RE ON THE WAY BACK FROM NORTH KOREA. THEY WERE RELEASED BY THE REGIME THERE AHEAD OF A SUMMIT MEETING WITH PRESIDENT TRUMP. THE PRISONERS uh, WERE ACCOMPANIED BY SECRETARY OF STATE MIKE POMPEO. THEY'LL BE LANDING AT JOINT BASE ANDREWS RIGHT OUTSIDE WASHINGTON, D.C. Overnight, the president said he will meet them there. Just a few minutes uh, ago, they made it back, as you're seeing now, to American soil. That's the second plane taking off. Fox Chief National Correspondent Ed Henry has details on what we're watching. Ed? Tucker, good to see you. A major coup for President Trump as his new Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, is coming home from his second secret trip to North Korea in recent weeks with a major foreign policy victory in tow. It caps a dramatic day of diplomacy. These images that you mentioned in the last few moments, the three previously imprisoned Americans landing with Pompeo in Anchorage for that refueling stop, they're on separate planes because the larger plane has medical facilities for these three Americans to make sure they're okay. They will be at Joint Base Andrews, as you mentioned, just a few hours. Hours from now, uh, landing in the middle of the night after days of, of ups and downs, some uncertainty about whether this was really happening. After Secretary of Sp State spent 90 minutes meeting with Kim Jong Un and then returned to his hotel, reporters at the hotel asked Pompeo if the Americans were coming home. He crossed his fingers because it was still not a done deal until a North Korean official soon arrived to say these Americans were indeed free. The three of them, you can see them there: Tony Kim. Kim Hak Sung and Kim Dong Chol appear to be in good health, which is a big deal because of the heartbreak we all felt after Otto Warmbier was released from North Korea only to die shortly thereafter because of the horrific way he was treated by the communist nation. So the focus tonight is on these three free Americans. So the president is already looking ahead at how this sets the table for his summit with Kim that is likely coming in early June. The president saying today this will be a great moment for the entire world. A short time ago, the president tweeted, quote, looking forward to greeting the hostages no longer hostages at 2 a.m. Fox News will be there. I'm going to be hosting live coverage in the middle of the night. The president, we expect Vice President Mike Pence as well, greeting them on American soil. One year ago, the president's critics were charging his hot rhetoric was going to start a nuclear war. Instead, that tough talk is bringing home three Americans and teeing up a possible peace, peace summit, Tucker. Ed Henry, remarkable story, unexpected story. Yep. Thanks for that. The release, obviously, a good sign. How optimistic should the rest of us be, though, for long-term peace in the Korean Peninsula? Where is this headed? Harry Kazianis is director of defense studies at the Center for the National Interest and a specialist in North Korea. He joins us tonight. Um, so, Harry, where is this going? You know, the pictures are mind-blowing. That the photo ops are amazing. But I'm still a little skeptical, and I think we have a lot of reason here to still be skeptical, Tucker. Think about it this way. Kim Jong-un is the equivalent of Michael Corleone literally being dropped into a country and running his own private fiefdom. They sell drugs around the world. They counterfeit U.S. dollars. The Kim family is literally responsible for the death of millions of North Koreans and South Koreans if you lump in the Korean War. So we have reason to be skeptical. However, I am a little bit optimistic the situation might be a little bit different. We have to remember that the North Koreans are under tremendous pressure. This maximum pressure campaign is completely different than what we've seen before because we actually have buy-in from the Chinese this time. Now, in previous attempts when we've tried to put a lot of pressure on the North Koreans. The Chinese would enforce the sanctions for a couple weeks, a few months, then they would drop off. This time, they've actually been a lot more consistent in applying the pressure that we need to box the North Koreans in. So now I think it's the time to strike. I'm very skeptical. History screams out to us to be skeptical, but I'm a little bit more optimistic. And than yet I was. they are releasing these three American citizens. Who are they, and w under what pretext were they held? Well, I, I think a lot of it is basically I, one of the gentlemen I believe was a farmer, another was a professor, another was an entrepreneur, and a lot of these people are, are going to North Korea because they want to try and do good. They're working in universities. They're trying to build people-to-people -people connections. That's a smart idea. I think it's good that they've been released. But there's a question I just can't get out of my mind, Tucker. What does Kim Jong-un want for his nuclear weapons? That's the cloud that's hanging over this whole summit. Does he want $100 billion? I mean, it's obvious he wants security guarantees. He wants his regime to be secure. That's the question we need to ask, and I hope that President Trump is asking that. Is it fair to assume that that rhetoric that Ed Henry was referring to earlier from last year that was so widely criticized, President Trump just took it right verbally uh, to the North Korean regime and was denounced as kind of a lunatic by Americans here, that seems to have borne fruit in a way that previ previous efforts haven't. Is that fair? I think that's fair. I think the rhetoric is important, but I think the policies have made a difference here. Because at the end of the day, Tucker, even if we can't get Kim Jong-un to give up his nuclear weapons, we have a policy that would work. And we've talked about this before. It's called containment. That's really all what maximum pressure is. It's containment on steroids. We box the North Koreans in. 
If they don't want to give up their nuclear weapons, fine. We've dealt with other countries that have had nuclear weapons in the past that are a threat to us. Soviet Union had thousands of nuclear weapons. We handled that effectively. We can do this. So we have the right policies. We're not yet on the brink of nuclear war like we talked about last year. We're safe. We're okay. It's a bad threat. It's an existential threat, but we know how to handle these threats. Impressive. Uh, really, I, mean, I don't think anyone would have predicted this no. uh, at all. Harry, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Stay with Fox News Channel for live coverage of the homecoming of those three hostages. It's throughout the night. Ed Henry hosting, as you just heard.